Every dummy, every happy. Every mammy. Just love me. You wanna win your money? And then when you're bad, you know what you're talking about me. Also, I'm 90% sure that this cup has lead, but it's cute. So like, what you gonna do? I think it's safe if my lips just don't touch the paint, right? Today, we're talking about commitment issues. How fun, right? I pick the most fun topics to talk about on here. You know, one week I'll come and we'll just talk about things that make us happy, but for now, I will only choose problems. Only issues, never positives. What can I say? I'm a, I'm a pessimist. While we talk today, I'm gonna be doing my hair. I'm going nowhere tonight, so I don't know why I decided to get ready. It's currently 5 p.m., maybe I'll go out. Announcement. Ba bam We got merch, baby! Woo woo woo! Look at that, A. Hey, get a little close up. Y'all seeing this? Y'all seeing this? You can also wear a crossbody. Bam. Okay. Bam. But yes, I made tote bags. Not necessarily merch, but I guess it kind of is. I've always wanted to start a little art shop and like sell my own products and items that I make with like my own designs. It's always been a thing I wanted to do. I grew up loving art and drawing and I feel like I don't allow myself to draw that much anymore just because of time's sake. So this way I can sort of get that fill. I always say one of my dreams is to run a little Etsy shop when I'm an elder and you know, after I retire, spend my elderly years packing up little art prints and stuff and mailing them out. But I was like, why wait? Do it now, do it now. So I did it now. By the time I post this video, hopefully the site will be live and you can buy one yourself. And if so, I'll leave the link in the description box if you would like to purchase and support me and my art. We are using a new heat protectant today because I ran out of my other one. I honestly don't know like what makes a good heat protectant? Like how can you tell? Life has been pretty good recently. It's been very chill, but very good. I've been hanging out with friends and working. This is the most consistent I've ever been on YouTube. I've been making new friends, guy friends to be exact. You guys might think, who fucking cares? You don't understand. That doesn't happen for me. All my life, I've always just been friends with girls. You know, some people are gonna relate to this, but when you're the only guy in the friend group and they all go to the bathroom and then you just have to awkwardly wait outside the bathroom. Yeah, that was me my entire life. I think it's because growing up, I was a very artsy kid. I, I loved art. I was not athletic, not into sports. I remember when people would ask, what sports team is better, this or this? I'd be like, hey. <laughs> I'd just pick one. I would just pick one. I'd be like, oh yeah, them, for sure. Is this baseball? Soccer? What are y'all talking about? Let me know. I'm always just related with girls and women, especially growing up where I grew up. All the dudes were so douchey and just bad people, at least the guys I've seen. And honestly, I think that's affected me to now where I don't trust men. Even the people who are known to be good guys, in my head, I'm like, there's something wrong there's something bad about you. Now, not so much. I've allowed myself to get along with and trust men more, but definitely like a year ago and prior to that, I just never had guy friends. I was always very standoffish with guys, especially where I live now. I live in LA, so maybe that's why my relationship with making friends with dudes is getting better now. You know, it's LA, like people are accepting here. People are just more open. And so many dudes who are super artsy or just have like a variety of interests. While growing up, I just never saw dudes who were interested in the same things I were. But yeah, I've been like making friends with dudes. We actually like get along and the conversation flows so smoothly and organically. We could just have like good conversation and have similar interests and it's not weird or awkward. What? There's just a different dynamic that is so, so refreshing. This might sound so lame and sad to some of you, but I take this as a sign that I'm, I'm growing. This is like a really big step for me. And, and my friends understand that because I literally was telling them today, I was like, oh my God, guys, I've made new, a new guy friend again. And they were like, oh my God, yes. They know how hard it is for me. Also, it kind of just gets tiring constantly always being the only guy in everything. Even with YouTube, in this community or this niche of YouTube, kind of like this lifestyle aesthetic side of YouTube, it's predominantly women. Like I am the only dude basically that I know of in this circle. So it gets kind of lonely in this like creative 
community and I don't really get to watch any guys on this platform that also makes videos like I do. So mostly I watch a lot of, you know, my friends who are girls. I watch other YouTubers too. I love like comedic people and stuff, but th those are also women actually. That's the one thing I will say. I don't think a lot of men are funny. Like men do not make me laugh. Have you guys met a funny man other than me? We're kind of talking a lot about my mental health and how my brain works and the way I think and of course, past trauma. Which leads me to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch therapists at any time with no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom picked for you. More scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Dustin, and I've also linked them below in the description. Thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I've been thinking about commitment issues lately and whether or not I have them. People are constantly saying, oh, I have commitment issues. Like it's a thing I see people talk about constantly. I never ever thought I would ever have them just because I've always been such a romantic. You're talking to someone who's never been in a relationship. I've been on a few dates here and there, but they never led anywhere. And that's kind of the extent of my experience. So not only did I never think I'd ever have commitment issues just because I've always been such a romantic and have idealized love, but I've never actually ever been close to reach the point where I had to even think about ever being in a relationship. So the idea of commitment issues has never even crossed my mind. Here's some things that made me question whether or not I have commitment issues. One of them being, I have never liked anyone who's liked me back. I've never gone on a date with someone and be like, oh yeah, I like you. Like, I feel like every date I've been on, I've always been like, whatever. No one has ever, you know, sparked that much interest in me. That being said, maybe I just haven't gone on that many dates with people I'm attracted to. I'll also admit, I have really high standards. I think I just deserve more or I want more and nothing will get me to lower it. I've tried in the past, but it just doesn't work in the end because I'm just not satisfied. Why do I want a, like a, like a, a model? Like why are my standards so high? Not only do I want like the great personality, but also I want them to be like the most beautiful person on earth. But it's also like, ah, oh, I want it though. And I can't lower my standards. And then I've had the whole thing where I'm like, okay, Dustin, why do you have these standards? Do you think you even deserve to have these high standards? But then I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Anyone is entitled to have their own standards. And if that's so fucking high where you might not ever meet anybody ever, so be it. Cause that is me. Maybe it's like social media and I'm just like constantly seeing pretty people in front of me. Or maybe it's also cause I'm in LA and like everyone here is so beautiful and I'm constantly surrounded by beautiful people. I don't know what this is about to say, but I see people who I'm like, oh, like, I feel like we're at the same level and they're dating someone who I find attractive and who fits my standards. And I'm like, okay, well, if that person was able to get this person in my head, I'm like, I should be able to get that, that type of person eventually too. So my standards are okay because it's possible. Like it's possible, like that person got that person. And I feel like we're kind of like, so it's like possible. This kind of gets into the concept of leagues. Like, oh my gosh, that person is out of my league. I don't believe in leagues. If a person who is quote unquote, not conventionally attractive has the same standards as the hottest person alive and wants like their partner to be the hottest person alive. Like, I think that's fine. Like who cares? Like it's their standards. They get to decide what their worth is. I just feel like standards are up to you. And like, maybe it's not realistic, but who cares? Feed into delusions, baby. Cause I feel like I'd rather keep my really high standards than be with someone that isn't my standards and that I won't be happy with. But I will say, I do think social media really feeds into standards. You see so many attractive people on the internet, you start to think, oh, that's like very normal. Like there's so many attractive people out there, which there are, but you start to think, there's an abundance of it where you're like, it changes your standards where you're like, oh, I want that then because it's all you're seeing. Like I hate the whole concept of leagues and how we have to date within our league and we can only get people within our league. Like that's so stupid. This all circles back to the reality that people who have shown interest in me and who like me, I don't like them back. And everyone that I've 
liked and wanted has never wanted or liked me back. So it's like, I want people who don't want me. Or is it everyone who's liked me has not met my standard and everyone I've liked just ha happens to never have liked me back. I've always had this romantic idea of love and have been in this like fantasy of rom-coms and grand gestures. And a part of me kind of thinks that maybe because I've never gone close to a relationship, I've gone into kind of frolic in this fantasy land of what I think love is. And I might be too scared whenever a relationship actually comes to me to actually get into that relationship because I know that my idea of love right now isn't real, but it makes me happy. And I feel like once I enter a relationship, I know all my ideas of love will be crushed. I'll see the reality of it. And then I will lose that whole fantasy land that I love so much. And I want that even though it's not real. So do I have commitment issues? Do I not feel like I'm worthy of love? Or do I just think I deserve perfection? But then again, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Come on, Hannah Montana. Which actually, let's talk about that because that bothers me. I was talking about this with my friend, but we all technically settle in love because nobody is perfect. Everybody has flaws and no one will ever reach that standard, what you would think is your perfect person. And that bothers me. We've been fed our entire life to find your soulmate, which I don't believe in soulmates anymore. Soulmates don't exist because you work in love. You work hard for love. Although I'm also a believer that love should be easy. So it's like, I think you choose who you love. You do choose who you love and, and you learn about someone and, and, and develop love for them. And the perfect person's out there for you, but they're not because nobody's perfect. There's always gonna be a flaw about them. You can't build your dream person. That's like impossible. And you never know who else is out there. Like there's so many people on this planet. You're gonna stay with the person you met in your hometown since you were 15. Like you think that's the best? of the best you can do, that's gonna be your partner for your life. That is just crazy to me that there's so many people in the world to meet and to experience. We all just like get into relationships and settle down so fast. Some people, they get into like maybe three relationships and then they get married. You didn't even meet anyone out the country. Like there could be so many people out there that are like so good for you. We don't meet them because there's so many people. So we all like kind of settle, like every relationship You've settled. It's a fact. You can't argue with me on that. We all settle. If you were to build your perfect person, your partner probably is not that. And if they are to the T, then good for you. Maybe that's just me though. I want to be able to meet a lot of people, date a lot of people. Maybe that's just the perfectionist in me though, because that's not what love is all about. You're supposed to love somebody, flaws and all. If you're truly with the right person, you wouldn't feel that way. I guess you'd feel satisfied. So that's clearly me being just inexperienced and clueless. I feel like monogamy, I'm I'm not saying I don't like monogamy and I'm not gonna do it because I, <laughs> I like monogamy. But if you really think about it, in history, monogamy wasn't a thing. Monogamy became a thing once business transactions started happening between families and you were marrying off your daughter. Back in history, like everyone was being with everyone. You know what I'm saying? Again, not saying I'm not into monogamy because I am. But I'm just saying, it hasn't always been this way. And then after thinking about all that, if I met my dream person right now, has every attribute I've wanted, would I be able to commit? And that's kind of how I was dealing with the fact that I might have commitment issues. Cause I was like, no, like, cause if my dream person came along, I would be able to commit to them. At least that's what I say. Why would I not be able to commit to like a perfect dream person who's everything I've ever wanted? So maybe I just haven't met the right person. And I think that's the conclusion. All of this, could still mean commitment issues. Commitment issues and insecurity go hand in hand. And at the end of the day, I am a believer that commitment issues actually don't exist. It just means you haven't found the right person yet. Because if they truly were the right person, you would know. You would feel satisfied and whole, and you wouldn't have all those insecurities that are the commitment issues that everyone's used to be talking about. I don't think I have commitment issues, truly. I've never, you know, experienced love or been in a relationship, but from what everybody says, when you know, you know. Lana Del Rey said that in, in her song. So, in Lana we trust. When you know, you know. I mean, there's people out there who have been happily married for like 30 plus years. So obviously I'm gonna trust in their wisdom, but right now my little brain and my little experience on earth is making me think a lot about these things. That is pretty much all I have to say about commitment issues. Bye. Are we singing the outro song right now? Yeah? Okay. 
Was it something I said? Oh, fuck.